Hey, how's life, how's the weather, and how is your cow? Today, we're going to be looking at personality typology. Now, this is actually a pretty popular thing. People like to do quizzes to find out what their personality is. So, one of the common type theories is called the Myers-Briggs Type Indicator, or MBTI. This site, 16 Personalities, is based off MBTI, except it's more just using the letters and then another theory called the Big Five, where they add on a fifth letter, which is dash A or dash T, assertive or turbulent. So today I'm going to be looking at the 16 Personalities test. The test that gives you a freakishly accurate description of who you are and why you do the things you, the way you do. So let's take the test and see how it goes. I'll probably be ridiculing this site, so if you adore 16P with all your heart, please stop watching. This test is fast and easy, takes less than 12 minutes. Be yourself. Answer honestly, even if you don't like the answer. Complete it all. All of it. Do not leave any neutral answers. So, let's get started! You enjoy vibrant social events with lots of people. No. Not really. You often spend time exploring unrealistic, yet intriguing ideas. Yeah, sure. I see where you're going, trying to make me look intuitive because I like unrealistic stuff. Your travel plans are more likely to look like a rough list of ideas than a detailed itinerary. Now while I over-prepare for a lot of things and want to make sure I'm ready and don't get lost and all that, I don't usually have much of an idea of what I'm doing when I go out and stuff. And very bold of you to assume that I travel, or that I can even afford to travel. I guess I slightly agree. You often think about what you should have said in a conversation long after it has taken place. Yeah. Not because I regret it or anything. It's interesting to see how things could have turned out if one thing was slightly changed. Like back to the future or whatever. If your friend is sad about something, your first instinct is to support them emotionally, not try to solve their problem. Well, it was initially not really instinct, because I used to try and solve problems for people before realizing that a lot of the time when someone's upset, they just want someone to hug them, to say it's going to be okay, and to support them emotionally. And when they're in a calm state, then you can try and solve the problem. So through experience, I've learned it's better to support them emotionally, though that's not necessarily what my instinct is. But I guess when you make something a habit, it becomes instinctual, and that's good. People can rarely upset you. Yeah. I mean, I've already said all the cruelest possible things to myself, and I doubt anyone's a worse critic than I am. You often rely on other people to be the ones to start a conversation and keep it going. Yeah, most of the time I do, because I'm lazy and awkward. But that doesn't mean I don't start conversations or awkwardly add in a house the weather to try and keep it alive. If you have to temporarily put your plans on hold, you make sure it is your top priority to get it back on track as soon as possible. Yes, I am a wonderful J-type. Look at me making decisions. I just like to get stuff done and out of the way. You rarely worry if you made a good impression on someone you met. Yeah. Because I already know all my impressions are going to be terrible, but that doesn't matter. 
It's their fault if they're gonna judge me because I did something stupid the first time we met. Yeah, I don't really worry. It would be a challenge for you to spend the whole weekend all by yourself without feeling bored. Man, imagine having to be at home all by yourself with the internet at your fingertips, with socks and tiled floors, and being able to play music as loudly as you want. Man, I would be so bored. I don't know what I'd be able to do. You are more of a detail-oriented person than a big picture person. Than a big picture. Than a big picture person. Yeah, I'm not really a detail-oriented person. I, because if you're focusing on all the small details, you're not really gonna see how everything's gonna turn out as a whole. But it also depends on the situation, because it's still important to have someone there to make sure all the details are all right. Because everything as a whole matters. Detail, final result, everything. You are very affectionate with the people you care about. Heck no. 20% there. You have a careful and methodical approach to life. Um, uh, I like to say I do, but it's also a pretty weird approach. There's method to my madness, you know? You are still bothered by the mistakes you made a long time ago. Not necessarily bothered, but I do remember a lot of them just because they were really funny. In retrospect, of course. At the time, I was horrified. Uh, so not really, no. At parties and similar events, you can mostly be found further away from the action. Yeah, I guess. And parties are exhausting. Haven't been to one in a while, so... Maybe they're different now. <laughs> That's mainly because I avoid going to parties and stuff. I'm really good at coming up with excuses to avoid socialization. What an introvert, am I right? You often find it difficult to relate to people who let their emotions guide them. Well, like those hippies and stuff who are like... I feel like... The spirits of the world are telling me to, to turn left on this road. I don't know. Yeah, I don't really relate to them. Okay, next. When looking for a movie to watch, you can spend ages browsing the catalogue. Not really. And catalogue should be spelled with U-E on the end, thank you very much. Um... No, most movies suck, so it's pretty easy to find the ones that are actually worth watching. You can stay calm under a lot of pressure. <sighs> How do I answer this question? Oh my gosh, why are you pressuring me to answer this question? You said that this, this test would take 12 minutes? What? I'm going to take more than 12 minutes because I don't know how to answer this question and there's just so much pressure right now. I, I, I don't know what to do. How do I answer this? Do I stay calm under a lot of pressure? I don't know. Do I agree? Do I disagree? Um, I... Uh, yeah, I generally stay calm. 30% When in a group of people you do not know, you have no problem jumping right into their conversation. Yeah. It's a lot easier to talk to strangers than people I vaguely know, because it's like they may never see me again, doesn't really matter because I don't care about their opinion of me, and if they're talking about something interesting, I'm, I'm gonna jump in regardless of what anyone says. So I, I don't have much of a problem. Guess that makes me an extrovert, am I right? When you sleep, your dreams tend to be bizarre and fantastical. Well. They told me I'm not allowed to give neutral answers, but I have a pretty even mix of really ordinary and ridiculous dreams. In your opinion, it is sometimes okay to step on others. No. No. It is never okay to step on people. How dare you? You are dedicated and focused on your goals, only rarely getting sidetracked. What was I doing again? 
Um, I don't get sidetracked too often. And I still get my stuff done and like, as long as you get the results, who cares if you procrastinate? If you make a mistake, you tend to start doubting yourself, your abilities, or your knowledge. Um, a little, but I mean, I make mistakes all the time, so I'm used to it. When at a social event, you rarely try to introduce yourself to new people and mostly talk to the ones you already know. Well, I think a lot of people do this because it's just easier to talk to people you're comfortable with. You usually lose interest in a discussion when it gets philosophical. That's another neutral one because sometimes I'm like, yeah, let's do this. Let's dive in and talk about the meaning of life and the universe and everything. 42. But other times I'm like, who cares? It doesn't matter. I just want food. You would never let yourself cry in front of others. So apparently thinking types never let themselves cry in front of others, while feelers will gladly express their emotions. At least according to dichotomies. But it's important and healthy to cry, even if it is around others. If you bottle up all your emotions, you're just gonna end up exploding one day and that's gonna suck. So I'll slightly disagree, because it is kind of awkward to cry in front of people. And you don't want them all pitying you and whatever, but... People need to stop thinking that it's bad to express yourself and to just have a nice, healthy cry. You feel more drawn to places with a bustling and busy atmosphere than to more quiet and intimate ones. Now here they are assuming that introverts like quiet, intimate places, and extroverts enjoy bustling, busy atmospheres. But I disagree. I think that it's really great to be out in a city, just walking around through crowds, there's plenty of places to hide, everything's convenient and nearby, you don't feel restricted and limited to a small space with a few people around who might judge you if you drop something. In a city you can be there and disappear in an instant. And I don't know, it's just fun to walk around. So yeah, I like cities and bustling, busy atmospheres. It makes me feel like I don't know, you're in a place where people do stuff. You like discussing different views and theories on what the world could look like in the future. Yes, it's so cool to think about. When it comes to making life-changing choices, you mostly listen to your heart rather than your head. Well, obviously, it's important to listen to both. You don't want to end up sitting at a desk job that you hate for the rest of your life, even if it does make good money. At the same time, you don't want to be hope hopeless. You don't want to be homeless for pursuing a career in art. It's important to have a bit of a mix of both. Make sure that you have a decent income, but also don't be scared to follow your passions because what you want to do is important and other people should respect your hopes and dreams. So I think slightly more hard. I don't mind being broke and happy. <laughs> you cannot imagine yourself dedicating your life to the study of something that you cannot see, touch or experience. Um, I don't really mind or care. Neutral. <laughs> 50% and we're halfway there. Living on a prayer. You usually prefer to get your revenge rather than forgive. I'm a very forgiving person. I just don't like the idea of revenge. I don't know. Taking revenge just feels really petty and childish and I would feel really bad if I took revenge on anyone. So yeah, I don't like hurting other people. You often make decisions on a whim. Yeah, 
like my random decision to say yes I do. <laughs> I don't know, it's fun to just randomly decide, hey, I want to go into the city. And bam, you went into the city. Because why not? And then you just walk around aimlessly because you didn't really plan that far ahead. The time you spend by yourself often ends up being more interesting and satisfying than the time you spend with other people. Sure, I know what you're all thinking. Oh, you must love to spend time with yourself. You're such an interesting and funny person. And I agree, I'm amazing. I'm the best person to be around. But mix me and my awesomeness with a couple of friends who are also really awesome, and you're just having a really good time. And I enjoy spending time with cool people, and people I like. And often that is better than spending time with my amazing self. So yeah, you often put special effort into interpreting the real meaning or message of a song or movie. Look, I had to do a lot of music analysis in school and occasional film analysis and stuff. And my dad and I love to dissect films when we watch them, but it's not so much the meaning or message of it that I care about, but rather the more technical aspects of it, like what kind of shots they used to show this emotion, and what lighting they used, and how the story goes, and what plot twists have they got, and in music, the instrumentation, how much they scream. I don't know, I don't really care so much about the meaning or message. Like, most of the time it's pretty obvious, and people can interpret it in different ways, and that's cool. So no, I disagree. I don't really put much effort into that. You always know exactly what you want. <sighs> no, not really. I'm really indecisive. What's that? An indecisive J type? Well, we don't know if I'm a judger or perceiver yet, because I haven't got my results. You rarely think back on the choices you made and wonder what you could have done differently. I mean, it's not so much a regret sort of thinking back, but a how could things have turned out differently if I'd done this? And that's still a cool thing to think about, just don't get stuck in the past. So I say I rarely think about it, but I do occasionally. When in a public place, you usually stick to quieter and less crowded areas. Uh, yeah, I guess. Mainly because I don't like running into a million people. You tend to focus on present realities rather than future possibilities. No, not really. I love thinking about the future. The future's fun. The future's vibrant. The future can be anything you want it to be because it's the future. And the present? Well, I know what's going on in the present. You often have a hard time understanding other people's feelings. Nope. I understand people's feelings pretty well most of the time. I've got that empathy thing. <laughs> When starting to work on a project, you prefer to make as many decisions upfront as possible. Yes, because if you make all your decisions early, then you know what you're doing and you have more time to complete the project. And who doesn't want more time to do stuff? When you know someone thinks highly of you, you always, you also wonder how long it will be until they become disappointed. Well, isn't that depressing? Um, uh, if someone thinks highly of me, first of all I think, well you're an idiot, but thank you, I appreciate it. So I would say I disagree. You feel comfortable just walking up to someone you find interesting and striking up a conversation. Yes. 70%. You often drift away into daydreaming about various ideas or scenarios. Yes. Daydreaming is fun. It's distracting and unproductive a lot of the time, but it's fun. You look after yourself first and others come in second. Uh, no. While I do care about myself and my health and all that, I also find 
other people important and I want to make sure that they're doing okay. And that's alright. Even when you have planned a particular daily routine, you usually just end up doing what you feel like at any given moment. And here we are assuming that judging types can't be flexible and deviate from their daily routine. Well look, because it's a routine you're doing it every day so you might as well mix it up a bit but you can still s stick to the routine and then go off and do something else as well. Uh, I'll go around there. Because this seems to be saying you've planned a routine and then you completely ignore it. Like I'll still follow through with my routine most of the time and then ignore it. Your mood can change very quickly. No, my mood is a pretty gradual changing thing. Most of the time I'm pretty chill. So, um... Oh wait, no, that's agree. I disagree. You often contemplate the reasons for human existence or the meaning of life. Not often, but I do quite a bit. You often talk about your own feelings and emotions. Not really, I don't go up to people and say like, I'm sad today or I'm really happy today. Actually, I do like telling people when I'm happy because sometimes that does help them to feel a bit happier about their day as well because joy is contagious, laughter is contagious, sneezing is contagious, yawning is contagious. There's a lot of contagious things out there, but I don't really talk about my feelings that much because that's just my own private feelings. They're mine, not yours. 80% You have got detailed education or career development plans stretching several years into the future. I wouldn't say detailed, but I plan to finish university and graduate. That goes a few years in the future. I'll go down here, it's not exactly detailed, but like I do have vague ideas of what I want to do. You rarely dwell on your regrets. I don't really dwell on my regrets, no. Spending time in a dynamic atmosphere with lots of people around quickly makes you feel drained and in need of a getaway. Yeah, being around people is fun but exhausting. You see yourself as more of a realist than a visionary. Ah, uh, no, I'm a visionary. I'm the next Steve Jobs. I love vision. I really enjoy thinking about the future and what sort of cool stuff I could do. Because I want to change the world, because who doesn't? <laughs> you find it easy to empathize with a person who has gone through something you never have. Well, considering that it's the fact that they've gone through something that you never have, you're going to assume that it's slightly more difficult. So I wouldn't use the word easy, but I can still empathize with people going through something. I feel their pain. I don't feel all of their pain, but I do share some of their pain because I love them and care about them. And look, if you're a thinking type, you can also empathize with people because dichotomies are dumb. Your personal work style is closer to spontaneous bursts of energy than to organized and consistent efforts. What if they're organized and consistent bursts of energy? Okay, maybe not consistent. I'm not very consistent with my bursts of energy. I'm a little bit of both. Depends on what I'm doing. 90%, I'm nearly done. Woo. Your emotions control you more than you control them. No. Because letting your emotions control you is not a good thing. After a long and exhausting week of fun party is just what you need. I don't know. I feel like even extroverts would be like, I'm exhausted. I don't want to have a party when I'm exhausted. So yeah, no. You frequently find yourself wondering how technological advancement could change everyday life. Yes, who doesn't? It's just fascinating. You always consider how your actions might affect other people before doing something. Uh, yes. Because other people deserve to be respected and have their opinions valued. 
And if you're going to be doing something that has some impact on other people, you probably want their consent so that you're not just going and ruining their life. You still honour the commitments you have made even if you have a change of heart. Yes, yes I do, because once I've made a commitment, I'm committed to it. I've promised this person I'll help them with this. Even if I'm sick of it and don't really want to do it anymore, I will keep doing it because I said I would and I don't like breaking my word. You rarely feel insecure. Yeah, I don't really feel that insecure. If you'd asked me this a few years ago, I would have still said no, but it would have been obvious that I was insecure about it. And here are my results. Your personality type is INFJ. So as you can see, they've obviously improved the personality test because before they updated it this year, whenever I took this test honestly, it would give me INTJ, which is not my personality type even though I'm a very thinkery person. So I have 65% introverted, because I'm 35% social, even though that's not how it works. Mostly intuitive, feeling, judging, and assertive, because I'm healthy and confident in myself and my identity. So let's learn about the advocate. Treat people as if they were what they ought to be and you help them to become what they are capable of being. That's a confusing sentence. Thank you, Johann Wolfgang von Goff. So, the advocate personality type is very rare, making up less than 1% of the population, but they nonetheless leave their mark on the world. Gotta love the special snowflake type! Now with these sorts of introductions and things, they're going to make it sound super positive and make you feel super special and unique. But are you really when there are 16 personality types and they're boxing you into one of 16 boxes? No. Not only that, but they create stereotypes based off dichotomies of introverted and extroverted. But where a lot of people will say, well I'm an ambivert because I like being around people, but I also like alone time. But that's not how it works because your introverted and extroverted parts of you determine your cognitive functions. Which is a whole other theory. If you want me to talk about cognitive functions, or if you want me to go into more detail on how 16 personalities really isn't that reliable, please say so in the comments below. Please tell 16P to unblock me from their Instagram page. I'm sorry for talking about cognitive functions in the comments on your really terrible insights and bullying you for your terrible insights, but I'm a changed man and I want to see your posts and laugh at them. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed me going through the updated 2019 version of 16p because it was changed pretty recently. This is what it actually looks like at 100% size. It's really big and annoying. They also have personality types here and they've animated them which is really cool. All sorts of crazy stuff, ENFP waving, moving butterflies around the ditzy INFP. All sorts of crazy stuff, isn't that right ISTJ? And <laughs> ISFJ is probably the creepiest one. Those eyebrows. Maracas. So yeah. That's 16p for you. If you want to take this test and tell me your results, I would be happy to hear about them. So please like, subscribe, and as always, keep smiling and brush your teeth. SpaghettiO out! Thank you.